Welcome to Quiet Cat's video series on maintenance. In this video, we're going to show you how to unbox and install your Tannis tire armor. The tire armor is going to ship one at a time, so you need to make sure you buy one for each wheel. A lot of people just like to do this in the rear, but you certainly can do it in both wheels for maximum protection. So to start, we're going to go ahead and remove the nice little packaging sleeve. It's got a lot of good information about the product here in the back. You also have a bit of a step-by-step -step guide to installing right here on the inside of the packaging. Next, we'll go ahead and unfold the liner and then we can get ready to install it in the tire. We'll go ahead and unfold, open this up. And you're gonna notice from the packaging, there's a little bit of creasing. Don't worry about that. The air pressure, once we get it all installed, it's gonna hold everything in place. So we'll just get it kind of unfolded here, set that aside. Then of course, we're gonna go ahead and remove the wheel from the bike. We've already gone ahead and pulled this front wheel off of our Jeep bike, so we can use this as an example. Like I said, this works in both the front and rear. If you need assistance on getting the wheel off the bike, check out our video on removing the wheels. So the first thing we'll do is deflate the tire and remove the inner tube inside. Go ahead and unscrew the Schrader valve cap. Now the valve cap has got a round edge to it. Go ahead and push down. You'll be able to hit the key in the Schrader valve and release the air. You'll want to make sure to deflate all of the air from the tire, get it all the way down till it stops spewing out, and then put a little pressure down to go ahead and get as much air out of the tube as possible to make this a little bit easier. So now that we got all the air out of the tube, we can go ahead and peel off one side of the tire. I'm gonna use the tire levers from Quiet Cat's Professional Toolkit. It's best to use two tire levers for this to make it easier to get one side off. Remember, we're just gonna remove one side of the tire from the wheel. It might be easier to set the tire on the ground for a little more stability. Start by pinching the tire together to get the bead to unseat from the walls of the rim. You'll wanna do this on both sides so that you can make this whole process as easy as possible. Spin the tire around, give it a good pinch so that we know that the bead has released from the wheel. Start with your first tire lever, come in at 12 o'clock, make sure that the lip side is pointed in. You're gonna come down inside the rim hook underneath the tire itself, and then get ready to lever it out. Hold the first one in place, take your second one, move it down about four to six inches, and then go ahead and at the same time, lever the tire bead over the rim. Holding the first lever in place, slide backwards with your second lever, and go ahead and repeat that process another four inches away. You're gonna repeat this process two or three times until you get enough of the tire bead over to be able to use your fingers and peel the bead right off of the wheel. It's best to use your fingers or a plastic tire lever as you're sliding along the rim so you don't scratch up your wheel. So now that we've got the bead off of one side, we can go ahead and remove the inner tube. We'll do that by pushing the Schrader valve back up into the wheel and then slowly peeling the tube back out of the tire. You might find that you need to deflate the tube a little bit more in order to get everything out. So we've got our tube and came with it our rim strip. So we'll go ahead and separate the rim strip from the tube so that we can get that back into place. Set the tube aside, we'll get back to this in a moment. Since our rim strip came out, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the rim strip on the rim. Line up the Schrader valve hole, hold that in place, and then go ahead and guide that rim strip back around the rim inside the tire. So we've got the bead off the one side, we've got the rim strip reinstalled, we have nice easy access. So we set the whole wheel on a desk just to keep things in place, to make it a little easier. Now the trick is going to be to shove this liner inside this tire. It could get a little awkward, we're just going to push it into place and try to keep everything lined up. And the next step is where we'll actually dial in all the location. So we'll lift up the tire. Start shoving in some foam. Now we've got the system halfway in. We've got the channel to go ahead and install our inner tube. Traditionally, the Tannis liner uses a smaller inner tube because of the smaller inside volume. If you don't have a smaller inner tube, that's not a problem. Your standard 
4.8 inch inner tube will do just fine. Nice thing about rubber is it stretches and bends. Next, we're gonna take our tube and go ahead and put it inside the volume as well. We're gonna line up our Schrader valve with the valve hole in the rim. Now that the inner tube is in place, we can go ahead and tuck the outside part of the liner inside the tire and also inside the rim. Be sure to get the tube inside of the liner and make sure that nothing is bulging out. It's easiest to start furthest away from you and slowly work your way back. Once you get close to the end, you can spin the tire so that the remaining part is furthest away and you can go ahead and use your thumbs and your fingers, get everything seated into place. Now our liner's in, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the tire, getting that seated into place. We're gonna get about 80% of the way around and then more than likely, we're gonna to have to bust out those tire levers to finish it off. So now we've gotten most of the way around, we're gonna ask for a little help from our trusty tire levers to go ahead and get this tire fully seated. For this application, we're gonna turn the tire lever around so that the hook side is facing in towards the bead and we can slowly and very carefully roll the tire over the wheel and onto the bead. Be careful that as we roll this side, we don't lose the other side. I like to hold my thumb here that way I can work the tire around just a little bit at a time, being very careful not to scratch the rim. Remember to do it a little bit at a time. If you try to do it too much, you could actually cause a lot of damage to the rim itself, which would require a replacement. So now we've got the bead in, we're gonna go ahead and place the tire on the ground and massage it back and forth to make sure that everything is aligned properly. So with the tire on the ground, we can kind of roll it back and forth a bit, give it a little spin, give it a little roll, a little spin, a little roll. And we're just putting a little pressure down just to make sure everything inside is settling into place. Now that we've done a full rotation, we can go ahead and reinflate the inner tube. We want to make sure that we do this slowly to make sure that everything is nice and seated. So we'll go ahead and slowly reinflate our tube. Once you reach about 10 pounds of pressure, we're gonna do the same thing, kind of pushing in, rotating, pushing it in, rotating, pushing it in. We just wanna again, make sure that everything is in place, make sure the tire is seated all along the rim and nothing is bulging out. Go ahead and inflate all the way up to 20 pounds to put enough pressure to seat the tire back onto the rim. Once you've reached about 20 pounds of pressure, Go ahead and check through everything again, make sure everything is in place, and then if desired, you can deflate down to whatever pressure you wanna run. Quiet Cat recommends about 18 pounds in the rear and about 15 pounds in the front for normal riding conditions. Softer terrain, softer tires, harder terrain, harder tires. For more info, check out our video on tire pressure. So now we successfully installed the Tannis Tire Armor. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below, and we'll see you out on the trails.